Hey, I'm Steve from This Week With Cars and this is my 1961 Morris Minor pickup truck. I bought this truck in 2013 and I've always wanted to get around to it but I've always been too busy so I think now's the time. Let's see if we can get this thing running and driving. Okay, I'll give you a little tour around before we pop the bonnet open. Inside you can see everything is pretty much there. It's not in the best of shape but the doors do open. You can sit in the seats. They obviously need attention. You can see the most of the switches um, are there just missing a couple knobs. There's a couple uh, you can see some rust spots on the sides. So A little bit of rust above the rear wheel there. Uh, when I did get the truck, I did put new, I uh, restored the wheels and put new tires on it because it wouldn't roll around and it was a lot easier to have it around if it rolled. You can see some rust on the tailgate. Uh, there's bulbs there, but no lenses. So the lights are gonna have to be addressed. I imagine this thing's been pushed around for many years. On the other side, some more rust and here's the biggest problem the big dent up here so that'll have to be fixed but it's not that big of a deal let's take a look under the bonnet Under the bonnet, you'll see the same engine that an Austin Healey Sprite or an MG Midget uses. Uh, it's similar to the engine that the Mini Cooper uses, except that that has a transmission that's bolted directly to the bottom of the crankcase, whereas this one has a traditional type transmission. You can see it uses just one single barrel SU carburetor. Uh, it still has the carb heater on there. I'm gonna need a battery, and it looks like there's no radiator in here. I think so the first thing I'm gonna do is grab a battery, and we'll hook that up and then go from there. Someone a long time ago has put an electric fuel pump right there, so I'm gonna hook the battery up as negative ground so that I don't, because uh, I'm pretty sure that's what is needed for that pump. Okay, let's check the oil. Yep, looks like it has plenty in there. Okay, now that the battery is hooked up, the first thing we want to do is see if the engine will turn over. So, I'm just going to push this button in here on the starter uh, switch. And you hear the starter is turning, but it's not turning the engine. It's not engaging with the flywheel. So... I think I need more power. I'm going to hook a jump pack up to this. Okay, I've got my jump pack connected now. I do have the ground on that connected directly to the engine. Uh, that might be what my problem is. I might not have good connections on this battery. Let's uh, try it again. Okay, engine's turning over nicely. Um, next thing we need to do is see if we have fuel. See if anything happens. Okay, the fuel pump does run. So let's let the fuel pump run and see if we get any fuel up to the carburetor. Okay, that fuel pump sounds terrible. You can see it's shaking there. It did shut off for a second there. Not quite sure if there's fuel coming up here. Okay, I'm gonna take the fuel line to the carburetor off. Put it in the container here. Okay, now I'm gonna turn the fuel pump on and see if we get any fuel coming out of there. Okay, as you can see, there's nothing coming out. Uh, the fuel pump sounds terrible, so I think that I need to prime, prime the fuel pump so that it can get fuel up here. 
So what I have here is a vacuum pump and I'm going to stick that up the hose, uh, go into the fuel pump. I'll see if I can suck any fuel uh, up from the tank and through the pump up to this little reservoir that I have connected to the pump here. Gonna put a vacuum on it and see if we can get any fuel to come up here. It may not want to pump through the pump, so. Okay, we got fuel to come out this time. That's uh, what came out. So the fuel pump is pumping now. Gonna hook the fuel line back up to the carburetor. Turn the fuel pump back on and we'll check for leaks. Okay, the pump is filling up the float bowl on the carburetor. I don't see any gas leaking yet. I can hear the air coming out of the float bowl. Okay, I'm gonna turn it off. The engine turns and we have fuel. The next thing we'll need is spark. I could either get my spark tester out here or let's just try to start it, see what happens. Let's hit the starter and see what happens. Hey, here it goes. Now, the oil light did go off. We don't have an oil gauge, so we'll assume that we have oil pressure now. Something not right with the gas pedal. I think it's frozen up. Well, it runs. I think I should see if it moves forward or back. So I'm gonna start it up again, see if I can back it up and see if it'll go forward. See if the clutch works at all. Okay, push the clutch in. And the pedal did not pop back up, so definitely got a problem there. I think it did push the clutch in though, because I can put it into different gears. So I can put it into gears and it wasn't moving now so I think the clutch did work but it's stuck to the floor now. Underneath the truck you can see the clutch is operated by a lever mechanism so uh, I'm gonna grab some penetrating oil and spray this all down. Okay, I'm gonna take a hammer Knock it back the other way. Lubricate it up again. So it does run and hopefully once the penetrating oil sets in, it'll move back and forth. Uh, but I would like to really get this thing drivable. So I did buy some parts. Let's take a look at what I got. Okay, some of the radiator hoses. Definitely going to need those. Got brake hoses. So right here, this is the brake master cylinder. Definitely gonna need one of those. And, and this black box right here is a new radiator. Let's uh, start with the radiator and get that in. Okay, here's the new radiator. It just bolts in from the side. So if I can slot this down in here. like it fits perfectly then I can just put in the bolts from the side there and uh, secure it on and here's the new upper radiator hose so I'll see if I can squeeze this in here Get the 
clamps on. Now the lower radiator hose, which is a whole lot easier on this car than it is on a Sprite. And then this pipe goes into this hose. Looks like I'm gonna have to loosen it here to get it in there. And that goes to the heater. Okay, now I just need to tighten all the clamps. I've got the new radiator hoses installed, so I'm gonna fill the cooling system with water. It won't surprise me if I have leaks somewhere, so I'm just gonna put water in here for now. Okay, I've got the radiator filled to the top. It's so clear. Actually, you can hardly see the water in there. But this hose back here is already starting to leak. You can see it dripping right there. That runs to the heater, so you can see how bad those, those hoses are. So I'm gonna pull those off and I'm just gonna take a piece of hose and loop those two, uh, loop the outlet and the inlet together, uh, bypassing the heater core, which probably isn't any good anyways. So let's get a piece of hose on that so that we can uh, have a water system that isn't leaking. Okay, slip the new hose on. There. And then I'll just let it loop itself back onto the outlet there. Don't forget to put on clamps first. Tighten up the clamps. Now that the engine runs, the next step is to see if I can get the brakes working. The master cylinder on these is located in the frame rail underneath the floor. So there it is right there. You can see that's really rusty. That's uh, probably not going to work anymore. In fact, the pedal is completely frozen. So I'm going to need to try to get that master cylinder out of there. Underneath the truck, you can see how the brake line goes into the frame of the truck there. And then I believe the master cylinder is held on by that nut right there and a similar nut on the other side. Of course, everything here is very, very rusty, so I'm going to soak it down with some penetrating oil first. I know from experience of breaking a lot of these off that that's not going to come off if I just put a wrench on it. So I'm going to take a torch and I'm going to heat that up red hot before I even try to turn it. Okay, you can see it glowing red hot now. Okay, I'm going to take my wrench. Make sure that it's on there. Good and tight so I don't strip the nut. Give it a turn and look at that. It's coming free without. It's coming free without breaking the pipe. Now I'll try to get these nuts off that hold the master cylinder in. It's turning. It's a little hard though. All right, the uh, bolt goes all the way through. The head of the bolt is spinning on the other side, so I'll need to hold that with a wrench. If you're doing this job at home, you'll need a 5 8 inch socket and wrench for the other side. Now just one more on the other side. I've gotten both of the nuts off, but here's the fun part. The bolts that hold the master cylinder in hit the torsion bar suspension. So what I'm going to do to try to solve this problem 
The bolts are right behind the torsion bar, right there. So I'm gonna try to pull the torsion bar down. Stick a big socket up here, right about somewhere in the floor here to hold the torsion bar down. It should uh, be able to bend it without hurting it. Um, Cause if you're doing this job, you really don't wanna take your suspension apart uh, just to work on your brakes. So let's see if I can get the torsion bar pried down. Okay, now you can see the socket is holding the torsion bar down. You can see now I've gotten the bolts to clear the torsion bar so I can remove them completely. Okay, so let me show you what's going on here. Here is the new master cylinder. You can see these are the holes that those bolts went through. Now on the back, that's the port where the brake fluid actually comes out of. And then of course on the front is uh, where the brake pedal actuates onto the cylinder. Now if you look down here, You can see off to the side right there is where that brake line that I disconnected was connected to. So there's actually a T on the back of this master cylinder. And then up here, uh, way down there is where it uh, connects to the brake pedal. So, so even though I've done the difficult job of getting those bolts out, the battle isn't over yet. What I'm gonna try to do now is pry the master cylinder forward so I can get to that brake fitting on the rear there and unscrew that. I've removed the floor now that covers the transmission so I can take a better look at how this is put together. Okay, it just broke loose. You can see the fitting is off the back now. Master cylinder does move around quite a bit more. I should be able to wiggle it out of here now. I finally got it out. Before I put the master cylinder in, I'm gonna heat up the pedals and see if I can loosen these up. So I'm gonna heat it up and then spray it with penetrating oil. Okay, that did the trick. You can see the brake pedal moves very nicely now. Before I can put the new master cylinder in, I need to move this fitting and the banjo fitting to the new master cylinder. Okay, I've got the fittings changed so I can put this master cylinder in the truck now. I think I'm gonna vacuum this out first. The really difficult thing is going to be getting this back fitting started. Okay, I've got the pipe lined up. Now I'll need to force it forward while I try to tighten it on. Okay, I got that little fitting back on and I would say don't try this at home. This is truly a horrible task. Um, it's almost as if this car was not meant to be serviceable. I'm gonna slip some bolts in from the inside out to hold the master cylinder in place while I pound the bolts in from the other side uh, by the torsion bar. Now I just need to push the bolts through from this side.
And now just tighten these back up. Okay, let's see if I can get this line started in the master cylinder. I'm just going to screw this floor back down now so that uh, all the gases don't come in here as much as they would. Okay, I need to move the truck onto the floor so I can do the brake hoses. So let's see if it drives now. I need to get the truck up on jack stands so that I can take the wheels off and get to the brake hoses. Okay, you can see the old brake hose right here. This is the front left of the vehicle. And Here's the new brake hose. It actually came with a brand new nut that goes below the hose right here because the pipe actually fits inside of the hose fitting on this end of the hose. So you have a big, a big end on this side of the hose that the pipe thread actually goes into. One trick for getting these old hoses out, I like to just cut the hose off. That way you can just put a socket, a deep socket, over the end of this and get it off a whole lot easier than you could with a wrench. To remove this one, the pipe has to be disconnected first, so I'm going to heat it up to make sure that it breaks loose and doesn't tear up the pipe. Okay, now I have to try to break this loose from this. So I'll hold the big nut on the bottom. Try to turn this upper nut. When installing brake hoses, there's usually an order that you have to do them in. In this case, I have to install this side first because it needs to be spun into place. If you connected it on the other side first, you wouldn't be able to turn the entire hose to get this to thread in. Okay, this side is done, and I just have to do the same thing on the other side.
When putting this side on, remember your crush washer. I forgot to put it on the other side, so I'm going to have to take that back apart and put that in there first. And now on to the rear brake hose. Down here under the back of the truck, it's pretty much the same setup as we saw up front. It's just a longer hose. So I'm just gonna get this replaced just like I did the front one. And here's what it looks like with the rear brake hose installed. Okay, I have all the bleeders loosened and cleaned up. I left them cracked open because I'm going to use the force of gravity to help me bleed this system. So it's time to add brake fluid to the master cylinder. Okay, I've left the bleeders open and when I see, start to see fluid coming out of them, if I do, I'm going to tighten them up. So right now I'm just going to look around the truck and wait to see if any fluid comes out. Okay, I wanna show you, we're starting to get some brake fluid coming out on the corners, at least on the driver's side. There's puddles under there. Hasn't started to come out on the passenger side yet. So for now, I'm going to tighten up the driver's side, finger tight. Still nothing on the front passenger, but it's definitely coming out of the rear passenger. So I'm gonna tighten that one up. And lastly, now it's coming out of the front passenger side. So, so I know now the lines are mostly filled with fluid and I can bleed it better starting from here. And this is a lot better starting point for bleeding. If you are bleeding the brakes alone, like I am here, get yourself one of these Mighty Vacs. It makes bleeding the brakes so easy. You just loosen the bleeder valve, put the cap, onto the bleeder and then put a vacuum onto it and it will suck the brake fluid right out. Well, it's starting to get nasty outside, but let's take it outside and see if the brakes work. Okay, it looks like I have a running and driving Morris pickup truck now. Obviously there's a lot more to go to make this thing reliable enough to drive on the street. But if you want to see me do more videos with this truck, comment below and click subscribe.